Okay, I uh, I should apologise that we didn't get a lesson last week. Uh, in theory, I was meant to go on and uh, find another hour of my time and redo the lesson. I put that on the YouTube, but it, it just didn't happen. Um, time is something I find very hard to maintain. You know, the time go ministry and have three children. So it's about this. Uh, what, I, what I am going to do is just go move on. I'm yeah. getting a little bit speak back, thank you for coming clearly. I bet, yeah. Yes, I can meet you, right? Yeah, that, um, I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of feedback off you. Okay. Here we run twice for a bit, this is good. Uh, let me just turn on the Right, yeah. right, what we're doing here is we're uh, moving into the stocks. Uh, thank you for those that have first any homework. I'll try and get back to you once I've looked at that. Uh, and can I just remind you, uh, in terms of assignment, uh, you were asked to hand in uh, a little assignment on about a thousand words. On, uh, on suffering, is there any value in suffering? You, you know, anything to do with suffering, does God allow, have God to allow it all of that type of thing? Sister Kelly um, is going to send you more to me. I've only gave you half of mine. She's sending the rest of it to you. I've lived it in my... Yeah, I, I have got something did from you. Did you get it? Okay. But I did receive something. I don't have to read Right, so we're going to move the Psalms to the end. Uh, so I'll give you quite a lot of, uh, of handouts. I'll go through some of them, some of you just to give it to uh, 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 There's a little sheet here that says, I, I don't know what order you've got your handouts here. I apologise. Uh, I've, I've got a sheet that says, basically, read the Psalms. So I'm just going to read that. You don't have to follow it and find it. Just have a listen to what I'm going to say. You don't have to flip through it. Someone says, I need help. The reply would be, read the Psalms. No, you don't have to find it. You can find it later. Someone says to you, I need help. You could reply, read the Psalms. Someone says, I want to praise God. I want to learn how to praise God. You could say, read the Psalms. Someone says, I'm so depressed, you could say, read the what could you say? Read the Psalms. Someone says, I've sinned. Read the Psalms. I need to repent. Read the Psalms. I need joy. I need comfort. I need encouragement. My emotions need healing. I feel so weak, I want victory. I need peace, I want to try it. What would you say to them? Read the Psalms. There you go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, what, what I like about the Psalms is yes, we know that Psalms are like, some of them are like songs, some of them are written as songs. Um, we're, 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 we're not to go even on each other and uh, you know, get on early and ask you what your favourite song was before you became a Christian. Or, you know, but different people listen to different music for all types of reasons. Some music they listen to because they like it, because it makes them sad. That's the type of music you listen to when, you know, when they feel a damn jump or whatever. And I'm trying to be careful what words I use, because I could easily slip the song titles. Easily. Uh, you know, songs have a very emotional connecting. You know, the Christian songs are not Christian stuff. We listen to certain things because make us happy, or they make us sad, or they make us romantic, or they make us this, or they make us sad, or, or whatever, you know? So the, the, the Psalms is a bit that really can touch our emotions with all of those things that we talked about at home, really. Uh, let, let's have a little look. Um, I'm trying to make some sense of the order that you've got your notes in, if I can. Yeah, I, I think it's all in the same order as mine. Uh, there's another hand there for you that, that basically says at the bottom there is no circumstance in life, no mood of the soul, no fear, no ecstasy, no spiritual or physical condition 
who got the songs can't give expression and bring consolation. Don't worry if you can't find or if you have got them. But uh, you can read through your handouts anytime. I just want to try and pick up some things with you. Uh, there is a handout that talks about the links between the uh, Pentateuch and the Psalm. We'll just like to spend a little bit of time with that one. I did a whole series of lessons down, down in uh, the Sunderland Church office. It, it was dead interesting uh, to look at the link to you. What they're saying is, is there's a link between the Pope and the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, the Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So that there's a link between those and uh, sections of the psalm. And lots of people would look at the psalm and in section them up in different ways. And we'll have a look at some of those. Uh, but it's talking about links between them. So uh, let, let, let's do some of interest. Uh, I'd, I'd like you all to find a different psalm of your choice and have a look and see if this fits, okay? Sharon, can you find a psalm between 1 and 41, please? A psalm of your choice, anywhere between 1 and 41. Elizabeth, can you find a psalm between 42 and 72? Any one of your choice, any number between 42 and 72. And we'll, we'll just have a little look here. Right, so, uh, so Sharon, can you, what number psalm have you picked for us? Uh, psalm 25. Psalm 25, right. You know I'm taking a risk here to see if this works, it shows. Right, can you, can you read the, the, the beginning part of that and yeah. we'll, we'll try and work out what it's about. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me right, I'm going to stop you there. Okay. I'm stop you there. All right. This is meant that all the Psalms between 41 are meant to be about man, can't they? About? About man. Yeah. Because it's meant to fit with Genesis. Would you say that the portion of that, that Psalm now was about mankind? Yes. Yeah, because it was about man and God, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm not trying to sort of get it to fit it. It doesn't fit, it doesn't fit for that. No, obviously, I have to check through all 150 psalms to see if it's fit into these five chapters. That's why I'm interested to see if we're doing randomly to see if it does fit. But that sound of the day, like it was talking about mankind, and then, you know, or, or a person, you know, I, you know, and the relationship will come up. Let's have a look at the, the, the one of the Elizabeth's choices here. What number did you go for, Elizabeth? I couldn't hear the numbers. Was it 40, 40, 60? It was 42, 72. 42, 72. That's fine. Just give us a number. I'll go for 47, right? 44? 47. Right, can you read the beginning of uh, 44 then? I'm going yeah, for 47. 47. 47, okay. Yes. If, you, if you read the beginning of 47 for us. Oh, clap your hands, all oh, ye people. Shout unto the gods with the voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellence of Jacob, who he loved, Sarah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop you there, that. Stop you there. Right, this section is meant to be about redemption. Would, would you agree? Uh -huh. Yeah. Let's talk about the voice of triumph there. So, I don't know, you, you know, you, you might look and find that it doesn't fit, but according to this, Psalms 1 to 41, linked with Genesis, and in the book of Genesis is all about man, you know, and uh, Adam and Eve, and Cain and Abel, and, and all of the sort of literal stories. 
but about the man and his relationship with God, you know, Abraham and uh, Lot and, and, and all of that. Psalms 42 to 72, and then the link with Exodus, you know, this idea of God saving them, you know, coming out of Egypt, uh, redemption, you know, crossing over the Red Sea, uh, you know, God sending the plagues to help them against Pharaoh and all of that. Men think about redemption, how we're doing, how we're set free, and we talk top of time there. Now, uh, Psalm 73 to 89 is meant to be about the sanctuary. It's meant to link to Leviticus. So, shall we try one? Uh, I'm going to ask Marie here to pick a psalm between 73 and 89, and then we'll have a look at it together and then see if we think it fits into this category. Yeah. Psalm 84. So, you know, I'll turn to Psalm 84. Let's see what the uh, what the gist of this one is. How am I going for our life? Have not those world Lord of hosts? But my soul must be even facing for the comfort of us to talk. Now, we have me a that tabernacles are all the other force. I mean, it's meant to be about the sanctuary. The first, the first thing it mentions there are thy tabernacles. We know tabernacles is another word for a sanctuary. Uh, and, and when we talk about the sanctuary, we're talking about that place that we find with God, that place that we can commune with Him. It's talking here about the spout or finding a nest. Blessed are those that dwell in thy house. If that's not about sanctuary, I don't know what is. Yeah. So up to now, what I'm saying is, every scripture we've looked at, that me, that you've looked at, I feel like I'm doing a magic trick here, I'm not. <laughs> but uh, every scripture you've looked at has fitted in with the those categories. Yeah. Uh, Shall we have a look at it? Shall we pick it up here? If, uh, Karen, can you find one uh, between... Uh, Psalm 19 and 106 for us, please. You can just pick a psalm between 19 and 106. Uh, how many verses? Uh, sorry, I can't hear what you're saying there. How many verses? Yeah, you, just give us a psalm between 19 and 106. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name almost high. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the self, upon the heart with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. All uh, this, this stuff, this stuff, what number was that? Psalms 92. I can't even look for that. Psalm 92. 92. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't even number very well there. So this one's meant to be about the earth. Now, now I'm looking down, but thinking, I mean, you know, you might think, well, this title would fit in with, with some of the others. Uh, I mean, obviously you could, and we don't want to start to push a round peg in the square hole as such. Uh, I will triumph, the British man, when the wicked strainers of grass, thine enemies, horn of unicorn, palm tree, Lebanon, uh, fruit, he is my rock. That's, that sounds like the earth to me. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, it, it's, uh, it, and let's just finish this off then. Um, I'll ask, uh, well, I'll pick one, just randomly. Uh, I'm going to just number off the top of my head here. Let's go for 132. So I'm 132. And then let's have a look, see if this one there uh, fits. So I'm 132. Right. 
Lord, remember, David, all his afflictions, how he swore the Lord and vowed, should I not come to the top of that hill, or not keep my eyes to sleep, until I find out a place of a Lord I have a patient. Put me in the tabernacle, you know. Come on, tabernacle, you know. Um, the Lord has sworn in truth unto David, for if thy children will keep my covenant, my testimony, that I shall teach you, that children shall also sit upon the throne forever. That's taught the covenant there is, uh, that's taught about God's promises, the testimony, my, my covenant, my testimony, it's taught about the word. And basically that, this, this is meant in the name of Deuteronomy, taught about the word of God. I will abundant bless her provision. I must say, I mean, a quick, a quick other thing is what I'm offering to you there is, is this idea that even though the Psalms are written by different people at different times for different reasons, that somehow God's brought them all together and uh, we can link them to the uh, to the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, I think it's the number two economy, and the themes are. Psalm 141, Genesis or man, uh, Psalm 42 to 72, Exodus and Redemption, Psalm 73 to 89, Leviticus the Sanctuary, Psalm 1906, Numbers in the Earth, and Psalm 107 uh, to 150, uh, the Word. And if you think about it, uh, let's just think about themes of both mankind, womankind, how we relate to God. Then how we come we do, then how we find a place with God at that holy place, at the time within the sanctuary, and then the earth and how we affect those around us and how we're fruitful or unfruitful and all of that, and then how how really uh, after that it's the word of God and how the word of God uh, comes through everything. So basically, there you have. When I came across this, I thought it was definitely you know, but you got it a dead sort of uh, interesting thing between first five books of the Bible and Psalms and those things. Uh, any opinions about the Bible of the Sophie there? Quite fascinating. Fascinating, Maria? Oh, yeah. they're all linked together. Uh, uh, it should call us fascinating, so should we get a good, <laughs> should we get a good score on our test of it? It is, it is really fascinating. Uh, I mean, I, I, know you could, I know you could look at a psalm and you could think, oh, well, that one could be tough, that, that could be this, it could be that good. You know, it, it, it's definitely an interesting thing, isn't it, I think? Yeah. Right, but what I'm going to do now is I've got another handout for you, Daily Walk from the Psalms, um, and just to talk you through that. According to the Jewish Talmud, the Old Testament times, the offering of them on a sacrifice was accompanied by the singing of the psalm from the Sultan. These psalms were selected to remind the worshipper of the seven years of creation and were sung on the corresponding day of the week. Uh, and it says here, can you recall what God created on each of the seven days? Refresh your memory by reading the Genesis account. And again, there's another one that links scripture. So day one, day one, what, what was created on day one? Yeah. The earth. The earth, the world, the race says here. What? I'm testing you now, what, what was, I'm not near the end, but uh, what was created on day two? Is it right, light of day? The light of day, uh -huh. uh, What was created on day three? Day four, day five, day six. So again, <laughs> what did you just have a look? And then you can look at these psalms here. I don't know. And, and you should see how the map. So, it, so if we look at Psalm 95 here. Well, well, I've dropped down here to day 3, Psalm 95. That talks about the deep traces of the earth, the strength of these hills, the sea is his. 
So again, I, I didn't come up with these, but uh, you know, someone has, has looked, and uh, according to the, like I said, according to Jewish uh, religion, you know, the, the Psalms are linking uh, the seven days of creation uh, with, with Genesis and, and with uh, and with various Psalms. So again, you've got that look and, uh, and just sort of you know explore it a little bit. Uh, okay, I'm now, now going to do a little bit of uh, sort of English with you. I don't know what your English is like. Uh, 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 terrible here, uh, in the saying. Uh, I'm meant to be quite good at it. Uh, being, a, being a teacher who teaches a bit of English and being a primary teacher, but I'm probably not too good at it. When people talk about poetry, they often think about rhyme, they often think about uh, you know, various things. Uh, whereas we're looking at poetry, and you know we've already looked at uh, you know the book of Job. People would not obviously look at Job and think, oh well, you know that is poetry. Psalms, people often think it's poetry because you know you've got psalms there. You, you, you do sometimes have pride and other the sort of things that come out. We're just going to have a, a quick look at this, some sort of uh, English thing, so your English based thing. So um. I've got, them, I've got two handouts in front of me. I've got poetry in the Psalms and I've got word pictures in the Psalms. So, just to refresh, I'm sure your English is perfect, but uh, just to refresh here, in, in English, when, when we have simile, when we, use the, when we use a simile, a simile is where we say something resembles something else. Uh, for example, today, I've been as good as gold. Uh, Maybe not good. Can anyone else give me a, forget about your handouts, can anyone else give me a, a simile that you might use? <coughs> We've got some we use down here that maybe I shouldn't mention, but uh, as good as gold is, is a good one. Anyone? It's white as snow. Yeah. I didn't quite hear that one. It's white as snow. As white as snow, yeah, that's a good one. As red as crimson. Yeah. A couple of colour ones there, and, and, any more? Any more there enough colour? Why is a fox? Alright, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you get the idea, that, that's a simile. <laughs> and a simile we would say something is as something or something is like something. Um, we have some down here where we insult people, we might say you're as thick as a brick. Uh, which is, isn't a nice one. Thick uh, as thieves is the other one. What? Thick as thieves. Oh, thick as thieves. Yeah, it's, 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 it's loads, yeah. yeah. The Bible's got them as well. Um, I, and I've got them on the sheet here. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Uh, the good thing about similes is that uh, it gets you, gets you to imagine and think for, his, for that thing. And then you can start the link in that relationship between you and God. So that tree, I can't read that without having a picture in my head of a tree planted by the by the rivers of water. And you know what? Whenever I have you all got that picture in your head? Yeah, you got that picture in your head of the tree? Yes. Can I ask you a question? What's the weather like? In picture. Stick your hand up if it's sunny in, in your head. Did anyone have rain there? It's not sunny, there's a wind. There's a slight breeze. Yeah, there's a slight, a slight breeze. It's raining. That's why I'm <laughs> under the tree. Was it raining, was it? Yes, that's why I'm under the tree. The tree right, is okay. actually covering my whole body. It's actually touching down the ground. Yeah, the first one I've ever done this with where well, it was raining, everyone else gets a sunny one, never mind. Mine's <laughs> raining. I like the rain. But with similes give a comparison that can help us to uh, to fix something. You know, and this is implying the godly man is sturdy, he's long lasting, the godly person, he's immovable, you know, he, he he's soaking up from the river there, he, he, you know, all of that. Now now with English a metaphor as where something becomes something else. Uh, you know, instead of saying he was as fierce as a lion, for example, 
say he became alive. Uh, you know, he, he became this, she. Uh, and metaphors are pretty strong. You know, if you want to get a strong sort of emotion across. Uh, and the one that we've got from a scripture here is, um, for the Lord God is a son and shield. The one we, we say, you know, say God is a son. He takes on those things that we are, you know, the attributes of the son that we think of, a shield. So we think now about guidance, we think about wrong, think about protection. So that's a metaphor. Uh, hyperbole. It looks like hyperbole is hyperbole. This is an exaggeration to emphasize the point. And it says this all the night, make I my bed to swim. I wanted my couch with my tears. <laughs> if, it, if you want to say to me there, uh, you know, how, how you figured in the day, and I said, uh, yeah, Sharon, I, uh, I've been crying all night, but, you know, I wanted, I wanted the bed with my tears. Um, it's, it's, it's not really turning up at such a good time. Exaggeration. <laughs> it, 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 is an, it, it is an exaggeration, isn't it? But it's an exaggeration to emphasise the point. Yeah, how, how sad you are. You know, it, it's telling you how sad you are. And, uh, I, I think we all probably do, maybe not, maybe not that much, but we all do. Uh, the, the, the next one that I've got on the sheet there, that, uh, the, that, that is quite hard to pronounce. Anthropomorphism, I think I nearly got it. Really, this is talking about it's linking to link the body parts in order to get a point across. So, so that it says, bow down that name to me. Yeah, what does that mean? Does it mean that you're sort of leaning forward, you know, so I can hear you a bit better? Yeah, there is a sort of physicalness there, but really what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, listen attentively. Bow down our knee to me. You know, we, we, we talk about, I, I, I don't know whether I'm picking up static or whether some of you are talking, I'm, I'm finding it difficult. Sorry, but we're moving papers, it's fine. What's that? You got that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's static here as well. We can't make out at all what this said. Thomas Shannon can make you. Say that again? We can't make you out at all. You can't make out what I'm no. saying at all. No, I can't. You don't know about it. Right, okay, some of you are saying the base, some of you are not. Uh, I'll just continue not to try and fix that with that. Okay. So, so this anthropomorphism is it, talking about, uh, you know, like, like a body part. Like, you know, we, we talk about like the right hand of God. Yeah. And when we talk about that, you know, really what we're talking about is power. You know, right hand of God made his main in power. His left handedness was different in the Bible. Uh, right hand was power. We talk about getting on the right side of somebody. You know, we, we use it a lot in, in FDL, but to me, like I say, bow down that knee to me, means listen attentively. Uh, the, the other English part of the uh, personification, uh, that these are like the characteristics of a human uh, coming to like this objects. Uh, and, and the example from Scripture here is, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee. Which, when you say all my bones, or if, if someone says I'm chilled to the bone, they might mean that they're pretty cold, and, and, and not the, not the cold weather's getting right, right to the, uh, the bone. But what they're really saying is, look, I'm really, really cold here. Hear all my bones, say Lord, who is like the day. This implies I praise you from my innermost being. So those are sort of English examples of how they in the start. Uh, other poetry uh, terms here, I'm, I'm looking at one that says poetry in the psalm. Uh, uh, we've got it at the top there. People who talk, think about poetry, uh, think about rhyming words, 
you know, moon, croon, lovables. But um, you, you know, in the Hebrew, uh -huh. it's normally the ideas that are rhyming rather than the words. And even in English poetry, you know, once you put poetry, it hasn't got any rhyme at all. It's to do with the ideas that come across. So what, what happens here is uh, in, in the Psalms, a lot of verses are composed of two lines that have like a theme, it, it, you know, a contrasting theme. But there's two, there's five different types of verse rhyming, or like idea rhyming, or, or parallelism, as you might call it, in the book of Psalms. So the first one is, is synonymous. The thought of the first line is restated in a different way in the second line. So the first line says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And then it says, in the firmament throw his handiwork. So it's saying the same thing, but in a different way, which really expresses it. The second use is emblematic. The first line uses a word picture to illustrate the, the thought or idea in the second line. And here's the famous one. As the day, as the heart panted after the water, so my soul panted after the day. So it's, it's painting the picture first, and then saying, that's like, that's how I am for you. Third one is synthetic. The second line adds to the thought of the first one in order to complete it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's almost like an arm there. The Lord is my shepherd, and because of that, I won't want for anything. Fourth one uh, is a thought expressed in the first line is contrasted with the thought of the second line. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's to be some poor signs of it. Righteous, um, this will happen to the righteous, this will happen to the ungodly. You know, it's almost like, you know, the sun shines on these, but the darkness is on these. It's almost like a contrast. And then you've got the, the, uh, the climatic one. <coughs> The thought of the second line reinforces the idea of the first line. It builds it up. Give unto the Lord, all ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. So it's like adding off to it. Right, I'm moving on a little bit. Any, uh, I'm not speaking to ask something. Anything I don't cover in the class, please try and read your hand out. Any, any thoughts? Any? Just a look now. Yeah, okay, we'll move on. Uh, your next sheet uh, says, oh, well, it's meant to say, this is on the spec there, all the of Psalms. Uh, because I scanned it, I couldn't be bothered to type it all out again. Maybe I should have corrected it there, said that there is a spelling mistake there. Now, people who wrote the Psalms, I, I should have asked you before I gave me this sheet, but if I said to you, how many Psalms do you think David would have? Oh, one. Marie says here, I don't mean to hear Marie, Marie says she wouldn't have known. I don't know what can hear Dick, but it's not so many. That's what I can hear. If I asked you who wrote the Psalms, would you have said that David wrote less than half? Is there anyone not on that list that you thought would be on the list more? Or sorry, is there anyone on the list that you're surprised you didn't write many? Sounds of Korah? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah, good question. That sounds of Korah. I'll, I'll tell you what I was a little bit surprised at. Uh, that Moses wrote one. And I, I know Solomon was a wise man and he wrote other things, but I thought since he followed up with that, that maybe he might have put more psalms when he wrote too. 